Hey folks, Eric Cabral, founder of On Air Brands, talking about personal branding, podcasting, and how to grow your business using a podcast. Listen to this and more, pouring a ton of value into you and your life. Catch me on The Jesse T Show. Mr. Eric Cabral, what is going on, brother? What is up, brother? So yeah. happy. Looking forward to this for for many many weeks man happy to be here same man we we just uh we have this beautiful connection where we know we want to do some life together outside of this conversation man so to give everybody else some context on how that came about tell us who you are what do you do and who is eric yeah so i'll try to provide as much context uh, by taking up little of your time and the audience's time but yeah eric cabral i was in corporate america for 20 plus years uh before i created my company uh right now the media agency called On Air Brands, which creates podcasts and all the social media promotion around each episode. So, but before I got to that, I I was in Cube Life, you know, hashtag Cube Life, just you know, grinding it out and doing exactly what I was told. They get go to a job and and bleed corporate blue or whatever the you know corporate colors were, and stay there for thirty years and collect that gold watch. And that's what my mission was. And I was very loyal to that, bro. Like staying in every job that I ever had. I think the longest stint was seven or eight years. Mm. Um, but if you look at my resume, that's what I was proud of. I was like, look, seven years here, eight years here, you know, 10 years here, whatever it was, it was like, I only had a few jobs. And dude, what I realized was after 20, you know, something years, I looked back at everything and I was just sort of like thinking about how I felt about life and I was miserable. So I was overweight, you know, I was, I was, I was, uh, depressed, uh, you know, a lot of that due to me just not sleeping a lot. Um, and just had limiting beliefs, all these things that I was just unaware of that I became aware of and enlightened and started to make moves to, to make change and, and, and change everything really just flip the coin so that I could experience something else. And, and that's what brought us here today. What was the uh, two or three jobs that you had during that corporate career? What, what industry were you in? I, so creative, uh, I was, I went to school of visual arts in Manhattan and I got my graphic design degree, a BFA. And I got my first job in the Bronx, New York, um, for a finance, um, I'm sorry, a, a fashion company, uh, retail and it was great, dude. Like the, the getting paid to do artwork, like, Hey, we, we need you to make really pretty postcards and, and catalogs. And some of my stuff like made it to billboards on, on Jersey turnpike that we were talking about <laughs> the smelly, smelly Jersey turnpike. Oh yeah. <laughs> and, um, that was cool, man. Like out here, I was as a kid, you know, in my early twenties, like, wow, I'm making money and I'm just making stuff that comes natural to me. But over time, it became really commoditized and sort of like taken for granted because I fast forward, climbed the corporate ladder in all these different companies, these Fortune 500 companies. And I started, I got to the level where I wasn't doing the work, but I was uh, directing the work and building teams, internal teams for all these big companies. And they were basically saving money from my efforts by not having to spend hundreds of dollars on New York City agencies yeah. and far, and bringing it all in, in house. So I was the one of the, the cogs in the machine to help build that internal creative agency so that you don't have to you know, spend millions of dollars in, in New York City. So it got to the point where that was my reputation. Like, Hey, bring Eric Cabral in. Cause he's going to be able to help build an internal agency. And it was really the, the Eureka moment for me, dude, was I, I got an opportunity to go work for the, one of the top pharma companies, the, if not the top. And they were like, we got, we got a New York city agency that we want you to build from scratch. And we got a Chicago agency that we inherited and we don't know what to do with it. So you're going to have to fly back and forth between New York city and Chicago, and that'll be your life. And I was like, what? dream come true. And then I look over at my wife who's pregnant with our second. And I'm like, I don't know, am I going to be around when the baby's born? I just saw my whole life flash before my eyes. I was like, I'm getting fatter. I'm getting lazier. I just know whatever it was, it just wasn't good. So I was like, I'm out. I'm like, no, thanks, but no thanks. They're like, wait, what? You're, you're not taking this job. I'm like, no, uh, I'm going to try something else. 
Were you yeah. uniquely positioned in terms of finance? Did you have money saved up? Did you have connections in place? Like in terms of burning the boats, did you burn the boats or were you driving Uber Eats for a while? Like how, did that, <laughs> how did that transition work? Because it's you so obviously good. had responsibilities beyond yourself. Yeah, hundred percent, dude. We made that decision. And I say we, meaning the, uh, the CEO of the house, my oh. wife, <laughs> yeah. you know, I had to get approval before I was like, cause dude, she, she, she lived, uh, you know, we've been together for 18 years. Um, and 13 of those have been, you know, uh, marriage locked in, you know, this, this ring on my finger. And, um, I don't say I'm saying that in jest. I'm not saying that like, it's a bad thing. It's a wonderful thing. But I, I checked in with her. I'm like, Hey, I'm thinking about doing something else because I'm, kind of done with creative. I've been doing it all my life. Uh, there's, there's something, the next chapter, you know, a reinvention. So, okay, cool. She was always very supportive. Dude, she supported me <laughs> on mostly everything except when I wanted to become a professional poker player. <laughs> and I, dude, I was so into, I don't know if you were around the height of 2003, four, five, six, seven, eight, where it was like poker craze. Dude. Oh yeah. Yeah. Crazy. WPT, like you could see Phil Ivy, like these things were crazy. Oh yeah. yeah. It was every, I watched it. I absorbed it. I got really, I became like the, 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 the home game hero. Yeah. And I was like hosting my own games and like sending people to the world series of poker. What, what was your game of choice? Hold them. Hold them. Of course. Yeah. 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 That was really the only thing I was good at. Cause I just, that was, I was all in <laughs> no pun intended, but I was like, yeah, but anyway, <laughs> so that was the only time she ever shot me down. I was like, I'm going to become a, I'm going to sell my car. I'm going to, I dude, I was living the, you know, the bachelor's dream. I had a BMW. I had my own condo and it was like ghetto fab, man. I'm like living oh, in a yeah. condo with a nice car. It's nicer. It's more expensive than where I'm living. Right. But, um, you know, so then like, she was like, no, she was like, I, I just met you. I mean, we were probably dating for a year and she's like, you're not moving in with me. You're not selling your car. You're not selling your condo. Like that was gonna be my bankroll, dude. Wow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so, so that whole thing I'm sure cropped up when I said, Hey, I want to become a real estate investor. Yeah. And she, she was like, you don't, you don't know anything about real estate investing. I didn't.